All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over an example problem of different things you need to calculate in the purification table, all right? My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications, all right? So in the last videos, we looked at sort of just the theory of how you go about calculating different things like specific activity, U per ml, um, concentration, and so forth to make your purification table. Now we're actually going to do something with some concrete numbers, all right? So here's what I have, just something that's kind of important, all right? Let's do this, all right? So um, ultimately here, I have my activity assay, A versus T. I have a graph that comes out of it like this, all right? I have my A versus concentration of Z. I'm using the same reaction as before. I'm using a gets converted to Z by enzyme 1, okay? That is an E right there. And Z is what I'm ultimately measuring. This is my A versus C graph, all right? And ultimately down here, I have a Bradford assay standard curve. That's what this is. We'll get to that in a little bit. That's my Bradford assay standard curve. So I have those three graphs and we're gonna use them as appropriate. Now, in the last video, I said maybe you can calculate the concentration first. You don't actually have to do that. That's just a suggested order, because I'm actually not going to do that in this video. But you can do it really in any order that you want. Okay. The other thing, just to keep have you bear in mind, here I have a stock solution. This is a purified protein after some purification step. Let's suppose that the volume of the enzyme I had here was 50 milliliters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out of this to run an assay I'm going to take 40 microliters of this, 40 microliters, and that's ultimately how much is in the cuvette. And it's diluted with other things, okay, but the key is that there's 40 microliters in here. All right, so let's go about calculating the U per ml. That's what we're going to do first. Just keep in mind, U per ml is units of micromoles per milliliter per minute, all right? So... What is my M sub A? That, remember, that's my delta A, delta T, that's from the activity assay. Okay, that M, if you go come over here, is apparently 0 0.0015. And since this is in seconds, it's going to be 0 0.0015 per second. That's what you see here. All right, V total is 50 mils. That was my stock of purified protein. The extinction coefficient of Z is 18,000 liters per mole and it's also going to be um, per centimeter, but I'm sort of combining this E sub Z and the path length and just doing the slope of that line, which you see right here is just 18,000 per molar. Okay, you're allowed to do this because this is actually the product of the extinction coefficient and the path length. So just combine them. And then the amount of uh, protein I actually used in the cuvette was 40 microliters. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna first convert I'm going to convert this per second to per minute, so I multiply by 60 seconds in a minute, and notice seconds cancel, all right? Then, remember this quantity right there, I wanted that in liters, so I'm convert milliliters to liters. So there's a 1,000 mils in a liter, so now I have liters here. Also notice for the slope of the, um, the Z assay, um, L cancels with L there, right? I also want to convert this moles to micromoles, so one mole is 10 to the six micromoles, so moles cancel there. I also want to convert this microliters to milliliters, so there's 10 to the third microliters in the mill. Microliters cancel. Notice I will have micromoles per mil per minute whenever I multiply this out. And so I'm multiplying all these numbers right here, and I'm going to go ahead and calculate what the U per ml is. You'll have to just give me a minute on this. So 0.0015 oops, times... 50 times 60 times, let's do 10 to the sixth, all right, divided by 18000, divided by 40. So I'm actually getting, this is actually 6.25 U per ml, okay? That is the U per ml on this, okay? 6.25 micromoles per mil per minute, okay? All right, we're just gonna go on and assume that number is right, but that's how you go about doing that. So now I want the total activity, just U. So I'm gonna take this 6.25 micromole per mil per minute and multiply by the 50 mils, and this turns out to be 312.5 micromoles per minute, 
All right, so I have that. Now I'm actually going to calculate the concentration, um, and that's done by using a Bradford assay. This is the concentration of the enzyme. This is the standard uh, Bradford assay curve that I would have generated in a previous week. Let's assume this. Let's assume this is the way I did this particular assay. Let's suppose I have 30 microliters of my protein or enzyme, let's say 70 microliters of Bradford reagent, and the buffer was 200 microliters. What's my total volume of all of this? Well, if you add them up, it's 300 microliters. So I have 30 microliters of the enzyme and 300 microliters. That is a 1 to 10 dilution. So that means whatever concentration gets spit out by this curve when I solve for C, I have to multiply it by 10 to get the total concentration of the stock. So let's say I did this and got an absorbance of 0.5. So for this well, this had an absorbance of 0.5. Well, I'm going to solve for C. So that's going to be, let's see, 0.5 minus, it's the y-intercept, 0.0041. And then I'm going to divide by the slope, which is 1.026. 1.026. And I actually, let's see, I got a concentration of 0.0. It's 4.83, repeating. I can, you don't have to put the repeating, but 0.483. It was a 1 to 10 dilution, so the original solution that this buffer, or not the buffer, the enzyme came from is 10 times more concentrated. So just multiply it by 10, and so this concentration is 4.83 milligrams per mil. Okay, that's very important. Also realize that for this to be the case, the concentration on the x-axis would have to be milligrams per mil, but if it's not, you can actually do the conversion. So this is the concentration I just got. All right, now calculate specific activity. I'm going to take the U per mL I just got, divided by the concentration I just got. So what's my U per mL that I had in one of the previous steps? It was 6.25. So this is 6.25. The concentration was 4.83. So I'm going to take 6.25, divide by 4.83. And I get the specific activity is 1.2, oops, specific activity is one about 1.29, and it's activity per milligram, or U per mg. And that is the specific activity of my protein, OK? So that is basically how you go about calculating the main things that you need to for this, okay? Um, in another video, we'll finish this up and actually calculate a fold purity and also a percent yield for this. But hopefully actually seeing the calculations here um, with hard numbers actually helped you a little bit. So make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.